Hey everybody, hope everybody at your house is doing okay. I wanted to go ahead and record this short lecture about World War II. The last time we met we were talking about the Great Depression and some of the things that the government did to try to get us out of that Great Depression and I hope that you remember the three bigs that I wanted you to get out of it. First of all, we had TVA, which created jobs and also electricity in our area. Uh, federal deposit insurance, which made our money safe in our banks. So if the bank went out of business, we didn't lose all our money. And then the third one was um, Social Security, which gives us all some money when we can't work anymore. And um, it's supposed to really supplement other retirement. But if you don't have a retirement, it kind of serves for that. So um, most of you remember our big history wheel that we talked about where if uh, we have a time of war, we usually have that followed by corruption and then a time of problems and then eventually reform. And then we come back to war and war normally shuts down the uh, reform period. So this is the case for World War II. World War II is going to start and it's going to shut down the reform period called the New Deal. The New Deal was supposed to solve the problems of the Great Depression. It didn't solve all of them. It didn't get, get us to the empl employment levels we wanted, but we did end up uh, with some big changes that did help our country and we just talked about three of those big changes that are still around today. So World War II, we're going to talk about basically two things. Here we're going to talk about causes and effects, and then we're going to talk about keys to victory. And I created this file on a website called Canva, C-A-N-V-A, and I thought it was pretty cool, and it allowed me to create a graphic that I could go through with and talk, talk about these things quickly. But I do recommend that you go and you look at our notes, and there's some videos there that you can watch with some um, more information that will add to your knowledge about World War II. And also there's a graphic organizer there to help you organize your thoughts. But here's our brief overview of World War II. So let's get started talking about causes and effects. First thing is, there's no more isolation. In order to get involved with World War II, we have to get rid of this isolation, this, this feeling that we don't want to talk to anybody, we don't want to trade with anybody around the world because we have a lot of fears of, of getting back into some bad problems like depressions or, or even war. Um, so how we got out of our isolation was first of all we had other countries who had already started World War World War II in 1939 World War II started with Germany attacking Poland and Great Britain and France will declare war on Germany Germany will likewise declare war on them and the USSR will also fight alongside uh, eventually will fight alongside with the other allies but not at first but we will get involved by lending and leasing war materials, supplies, all kinds of things that our allies need to fight the war, Great Britain and France, that is. And then in 1941, two years after the war starts, of course, most of you know that we will get in on the war when the Pearl Harbor uh, base in Hawaii is attacked by the Japanese, December 7th, 1941. And this will lead to us declaring war on Japan, and then Germany and Italy will declare war on us after that happens. So no more isolation. We're in on the war and so we have to get materials ready. So we're going to start mobilizing. So this era called area, excuse me, called mobilization. We're going to control everything just like we did in World War I, but it's even going to be even more control than World War I because World War II is a much bigger war. You might remember that we had a Eastern Front and a Western Front and a land war and an air war. So we're going to go to control production. We're going to control prices, we're going to control labor, and we're going to control striking. And we're even going to ration things because we want to make sure that our boys at the front are getting the things that they need. And so we had to ration products at home, sugar, chocolate, rubber, um, all kinds of other food products. Gasoline was a big one. So just about everything is rationed and controlled by the government to make sure that people at the war front get what they need. We all talked about before in World War I how sometimes minorities get some extra opportunities during a time of war. This is the same with World War II. We're going to have Mexican Americans who will come across and help us with farming. We'll have women enter the workforce and work in factories and their poster child that represents and calls women to go work in those factories is of course Rosie the Riveter and she was at the top of our presentation. The Tuskegee Airmen were a group of African-American pilots who will go and escort bombers in Europe 
and they will play a big role in keeping those bombers safe. And the Navajo Code Talkers, these are a group of Native Americans recruited by the U.S. military to create a secret code language, and this code language was never broken. Unfortunately, in a time of war, we've talked about before how civil rights, there is usually a loss of civil rights in war, and a lot of people feared the Japanese, and there were a lot of bad feelings toward the Japanese, and so President Roosevelt will release an executive order that will put them into camps for their own protection. Very, very sad. Many of them lost their homes, they lost their businesses, and they went into the camps, and they had to stay there, and they couldn't leave for the duration of their time. And uh, one person, one Japanese American, he tried to fight this in, in the courts. His uh, name was uh, Fred Korematsu, and he will fight his case all the way up to the Supreme Court of the United States. And unfortunately, the Supreme Court will agree with this practice in the time of war. And so Korematsu will have to go to the camp. But later on, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court will actually reverse this ruling in the 1980s and pay $20,000 to every uh, person who was in the camps. Um, curious story about Fred Karimatsu. He actually tried to change his appearance to appear to be Hispanic, not Japanese, um, so that he wouldn't have to go in the camps. But he was found out, arrested, and eventually sent there. All right, so those are all the causes and effects. And like I said, we've learned about some of those before with uh, World War I and other wars. All right, let's talk about keys to victory. How do we win this big war? Oh my goodness, it was such a big, big war. So much going on. First thing we did was set achievable goals. And so here's a few of the high points of the battles and that show us how the, the Allies set achievable goals. So we achieved a turning point in the land air war at a battle in Africa at El Alamein. And so this was a, a big turning point for us just in trying to win one part of the war, the land air war. Second of all, the Coral Sea battle in May 1942, we set a goal to end Japanese sea power and we did that. And then on D-Day, June 6, 1944, we set a goal that we were going to liberate Paris and get France back in the war as much as possible and to clear the way to invade Germany. And we did that. So setting achievable goals was a very big part of our success. Second part is teamwork. Anytime you try to achieve anything that's very hard, very difficult, you always need help. And so the Allies, Great Britain, the United States, and the USSR, they met periodically, and they would plan their war strategy. And so here are some of those meetings, some of the most important ones, in which they decided their war strategy and decided what they were going to do. And so you can look at each one of these on the notes, and it will tell you exactly what they decided. But the big point is here is that they worked together, and they set a plan, and they followed it. Next thing, innovation. This war was so involved and there was so much going on that we had to find new ways to fight the war. We had to uh, set new paths. So here are some innovative things we did. Uh, first of all, the Ghost Army. We involved even artists in the war. And so we had a group of artists uh, who, you know, they might have been working in Hollywood. They might have been uh, drawing pictures. Some of them... Uh, uh, worked in theater. And so these people were really amazing. Their job was to try to confuse the enemy. And what they would do is they would take factories and on the, the roof of the factory, they would go and they would paint and they would design and they would make it look like instead of there being a factory there, it just looked like a regular uh, forest. Also, uh, they designed blow-up tanks and trucks so that they could set those around and make it look like that the Army was someplace it actually wasn't. And then another thing that they did was they made recordings of gunshots and construction and all kinds of things. And this caused people to think that the Army was somewhere it wasn't. And so it, it totally worked, and it was very, very effective, especially in the invasion of France. This is why the Germans thought we were actually invading a different place was because of what the Ghost Army did. Um, the Navajo Code Talkers. We decided to try a new way to communicate, and we decided to use Native American languages, which not many people understood. And so we recruited those Native Americans. They devised an alphabet. They devised a dictionary, and they made it happen, and it was just absolutely amazing. The Manhattan Project was the uh, secret project to build the atomic bomb. And this was a successful project. Many of you know that this atomic bomb was dropped on Japan not once but twice. 
to force them to surrender. Very controversial, but um, it happened. And a lot of people have questioned it since it did happen. But the reason was it was supposed to save American lives. And another uh, piece of innovation that's not here was the use of war dogs. I forgot to add this in on our list. And war dogs were really important to helping find the enemy and to protect our soldiers. And these were used in uh, the Philippines in dense jungle warfare. All right. The last key to victory is perseverance. Always, always, when you feel like giving up and things are bad, you've got to persevere and keep going because if you quit, they win every single time. And so here are three examples of battles that were just absolutely awful and people had to really work hard not to give up. First one is the Battle of Britain. This is the campaign of Germany to attempt to force Great Britain to surrender. And it was uh, also called the, the Blitz. Uh, due to the amount of bombs that were dropped on London. I think they had 52 days straight where bombs were dropped on B London, and the people of England were so worried about the survival of their children that they actually sent them away to live in the countryside uh, where there were no bombings occurring. And uh, you might remember a story called The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and that's basically what that's about. But the British held out, and eventually Hitler decided to go invade the USSR. And this is where we talk about the Battle of Stalingrad, which was another very intense, long and difficult battle where the Russians did not give up. Even women were called out to dig trenches and they held on and they held on until the winter sat in and then Hitler's troops didn't have all the things they needed and they were stuck and it was cold and they didn't have food and they didn't have supplies. And so finally they had to surrender. And then finally, another battle, the Battle of Midway. The U.S. was greatly outnumbered in this battle uh, against the Japanese, but despite that being outnumbered, we didn't quit, we didn't give up, and we used strategy, and we won the Battle of Midway, which was the turning point of the um, uh, war at sea. And so you have also in this other battle, the Battle of Stalingrad, this was the turning point of the war in the East. So these battles where we persevered and we kept on and on despite what was going on were very, very important in our success. And the very last uh, battle against Germany, the Battle of the Bulge, was another one where we held on and we fought despite the, the cold, despite the fact that we didn't have good supplies, the soldiers held on. And because of their perseverance, because of the perseverance of all these people and all the other things we did to win this war, we were victorious. So that winds up our discussion of World War II, the quick discussion of World War II. And again, I suggest you go look at the notes, go watch some videos, learn a little bit more. I hope you're all well, and I will see you next time.